All right, here we are. I think this is official episode. So like one episode that we had was a negative one episode. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be zero. episode 14. Is that what you're on? Episode 14. Damn. I know, crazy. Moving, moving it, right along. Yeah, it's zero. going. This thing's kind of building. Uh, I feel like almost at the same speed as uh, the Jake Instagram, the the Jake TikTok mm -hmm. explosion. It's a good rate. So, like the initial um, episode that you're on was kind of before the explosion. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, it was like right, probably right before, how, that, well, that was almost like, feels like almost a year ago. It was a while ago. It's like episode two or three. When did we film it? Do you remember? I can't remember. I, I know like that like, I know that the original um, video game, yeah. one had taken off. Yep. That one took off a long time ago. That was a long time ago, cause uh, that was Corona. Like, I saw it, man. I, people were reposting it. That's the craziest <laughs> thing. It's like, I was like, dude, well, isn't this you? <laughs> Once Barstool sent it out, that was the end of that thing. That just blew up. But. And so much people could relate to it at the time. I know. It was a good. It was good timing for that because it was people were in the house, stuck, and they had their things that helped them escape or whatever it was, or right. just get out of what's happening. And, that was a big piece of that. That's why I think that thing went so viral is it was relatable, which is, which is content in general, I think. Like, the more I do stuff, the more I realize, like, if it's relatable, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, right. It could be anything. And if there's people that relate to it, it's going to get out there because that's when people start sending it to somebody they know. Like, it's right, just right, right. over and over. Like, you know how many things when you send something or post something, you'll see so many comments or, like, people send it to their buddy and go, this is you. Or, yeah. like oh, this was us last weekend. Like, you see it everywhere, and that's where connecting to people and stuff that just makes sense to them or they relate to is it blows up fast that way. Dude, Malachi the baby yeah. has a freaking reel <laughs> that's, like, taking off. And it's about him lo It's about... So Chelsea just made it, and she's like, hey, you're done with the bottle today. And he's like, all right. And then she's like, all right, so we're going to get rid of it. And he's like, no, 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 never mind. <laughs> And, like, uh, it's so funny because I, you know me, like, I don't care. Yeah. But people with this little funny reel that everyone can relate to, mm -hmm. obviously there's the moms who are like, oh, been, my God. Been there, done that. He still has a bottle. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's still in his diapers. <laughs> you should be put in jail. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it, that's child abuse. Oh, it's amazing. When you I laugh. I, I do, too. I think it's hilarious. That's She doesn't take it too well. No, that's, the women never do. The women will never take that stuff well because it's not easy to take no matter what. Like, even right. if you don't care about it, like, I, t I have so many things that I'm like, I could care less what, it, I mean, to me, like, there's, there's like, let's call them fans, followers, people that support you. Like, right. those people matter to me. Like, if I'm on TikTok and I have 350,000 followers, like, those 350,000 people, like, they matter to me. Like, right. they, like, I don't know them. I know a few, a handful of personally but like they matter they actually matter like if I do something and and they like it or they don't like it like I get I take a little feedback from it like yeah. okay, these people are like follow me for certain reasons and they like this part of me and I won't care if it's like me expressing an opinion that I truly believe in and they don't right. like it like it doesn't matter to me but if right. I'm like trying to be funny or trying to say something that like I want them to be like oh yeah and they go oh, I don't like that I'm like well then I won't do that again because whatever but it's hard not to like have a small impact, but to me, it just became such a clear like. I, the people that support me, I want to make content and create things that I believe in. Number one, but also that they'll enjoy. Yeah. The people that don't, I'm like, you just don't exist to me. Like it doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm not above like learning from things. You right. Know, if, if a thousand people I don't know all say the same thing, like this was a piece of shit thing to do or say, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can hear that and adjust or whatever but dude that comes exactly. down to a little bit of stuff and like can dust it right off this is something that i've rarely i've never shared it on the podcast or openly 
But speaking on this, so recently people that I've known that have known me for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been incarcerated a bunch of times on and off. This last time I came out a little racist. Yeah. And, I, and I'm just going to admit it. You know what yeah. I mean? I came out a little racist. Um, the survival mechanism hit in and I was like, all right, I have to run with these white people. And I really, I thought I was going to go to prison this last time because mm -hmm. my freaking business partner turned on me. I don't know. My family says she turned on me. I don't really look at it as much that way. I'm not going to say, you know, no. I fucked up. I was high. Mm -hmm. I was running a business. I wasn't doing the right things. And yeah. my business partner wanted to do this insurance fraud scam. So, <laughs> I mean, I technically did some things that were wrong, but what, uh, at the end of the day, anyways, long story short, so it's like, I came out a little racist. I really did. Yeah. This is straight up real shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, then, then the whole COVID thing happened and that's when I kind of really looked at it and my racism wasn't like. So actually people who were in my sober living with me in the beginning of this whole journey would be like, your racism was out of control. Mm -hmm. I was saying things that were like out of control. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like you said, so like it was like a learning process. And uh, But let me ask you this real quick. I don't want to cut the story off, but or, or go ahead. I'll ask you at the end. I'm just going to talk on this learning process. Yeah. Like what you said, so people started being like, you can't say that. You can't say yeah. that. And I'm like, damn, like, I don't get it. I don't understand life right now. This mm -hmm. is a huge difference from what my life was like right before. But gradually, I became an, a very unracist person. Yeah. So. Because of the feedback and realizing it and seeing it, right? Like, right. Like you're hearing enough people say it and you go, I don't feel like it, but maybe I am. And then you really look at it and go, okay. It's this like is... this. It's like school. So like at school. Uh, what I think school does is it creates employees. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. like, in my opinion, school creates employees. I was never good at school. But um, I learned, in my mind, I always thought these certain things were important. So, like, to know history, reading, yeah. writing. And I'm like, oh, it's good for everyone else. But, like, I'm just not that interested in it. You know what I mean? But, yeah. like, uh, people that did go to school, they learned a language. They learned to think things are, like how they should be, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's like- I absolutely do. It's like ingrained, it's like, if, if I went to Mexico and I was like three, I'd learn to speak Spanish. Yeah. So like, obviously I didn't do school, I did streets and ended up jail, a lot of things, rehabs. And then I picked up on the characteristics of the people in my environment. Yeah. So even though I knew that it wasn't like the right thing to do, in the mode of survival, I picked it up, and then it became second nature. Yeah. If that makes sense. It to makes you. perfect sense, because I, I look at that all the time, too, and I was just thinking about this the other day. Like, there's smart people that, I guess, the world, like you just said, school-wise, I graduated from Harvard. I did this. I'm a law student. Like, right. people look at those. I passed the bar exam. Like, that to the world is, like, a very smart person. But to me, it's like... You, your environment and your setting is really all that matters. Like, right. that's all that matters. If you go to prison and you become racist or whatever to survive, like, and you work this system to where you survive for eight years and get out, like, you're smart in that setting. Right. You're a smart guy. Right. So, like, I look at it like, if I'm going to go to, like, I'm, if I ask a law student, like, hey, is Tarzan smart? You'd be like, fuck no, Tarzan's right. not smart. Like, okay, cool. Like, if Tarzan came over here and needed some law help, he would go, you're smart, let me help you. If you got thrust into the jungle, would you go... I'm good on my own, or would you go, where's Tarzan? You would say, where's Tarzan? Okay, so I just read, I think, exactly, you would. Here's the thing. I was just reading a book by Octavia Butler called Parable of the Sower. So I wrote a five-page paper on education and basically what you're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, which is also education. So Tarzan learned how to survive in the jungle, trial and error. Mm -hmm. So Tarzan would actually probably be the person that you'd want to go to a that wrote a book on how to survive in the yes. jungle, if you could write a book. Yes. Now there's a, and I forget how, what you call it, but there's like, like learned knowledge, and then there's uh, people that research people that do things, and then write that as textbooks. And I, whoever, if you know what it is, drop in the comments, but then write textbooks about it. It's like a, two different ways of writing, mm -hmm. and two different ways of educating. Yeah, like as experience, I've been through it, I'm gonna 
write about it, and then I've studied people that have been through it. Right. And then I'm going to write about it. Yeah, so in this book, I mean, I wrote exactly about that, and I wrote about, like, um, how important it actually was for the people who did learn to read, write, all that stuff to um, survive this world, post-apocalyptic world. Uh, you've seen Mad Max. Mm -hmm. I mean, just from reading the vibe, sounds like Mad Max. Uh, one family or a bunch of families grew up in a cul-de-sac in a gated community, and then they're thrust into this because someone yeah. finally burns down their cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. Now they must go into the Mad Max world. And one of the girls has like a really good, like her dad taught, like this is a crazy thing too about teaching your kids and, and every, like, you know, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. But her dad taught her, told her all these scenarios, all these things. And then she goes into the outside the walls in a Mad Max apocalyptic world and she's like able to survive. Yeah. She's actually, the girl in the story, Lauren, is like one of the ones who survived the majority of the book. Um, but it, all, it did, it was like, I, I really started to see the importance of both those worlds of like, is the more I go to school, the more I'm like, damn, my lived experience really it does a lot. It does a lot, and I, I, I really need to push the fact that this gets taught in school. Yeah. Like, my, you know, we have a curriculum at the place I work at, and I think, too, it's depending on who teaches the curriculum, the curriculum comes to life in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, right now I got about 20 people in a group, and uh, I, you know, job coach them. There's but, a reason AA meetings aren't ran by people that have never tried drugs and alcohol. They're never. There's a reason because those people, you, it doesn't matter what you learn about it and what you read about it unless you've been through it. You can't do it. It's you just like you can't even speak on it. In my opinion, I grew up in AA meetings from eight years old to 15 because my brothers and sisters were always going. I had right. two older brothers and sisters, and my mom would take them and put me in the car and like I'd stand in the back sometimes or sit in the car sometimes but like I, I grew up seeing that right. and I think that was a big piece of why that didn't become my life you know I grew yep. up going this is not where I want to be these meetings are not good if you're here they're good if you're here and you need them but like if you end up here it's, it wasn't a good road to end up here right. right so I always was like I don't want to take a road that ends me up here but same thing just from experience I'm like I would listen to people at 12 years old and go this guy's story is unreal. Right. This is unreal. And it's, I'm like, I would never want to do that. But I also look at the guy at 12 and go, this guy's cool. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, but, but part of it is... the same thing is all of these, it, you know, it's weird because uh, people look, it's like they want to know at an extreme point how you got through a situation. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, Tony Robbins is, like, really cool. But, like, then there's E.T., the hip-hop preacher. Mm -hmm. He's like, I was homeless. I was eating out of trash cans. And I was in eight years to get a four-year degree, and all he does all that. Right. Yep. And then, and then, I mean, I feel like, with how cultures change, like you, you like immediately gravitate towards that struggle mm -hmm. over, because it's real. It's absolutely real. Towards a guy that you know got. I don't know what he did. A guy that got handed two hundred thousand dollars and built a big business out of it. You're like. Mm -hmm. Nobody right. gets that. So to learn from you and learn how to make money when you got that head start is tough. Tell me the guy that started his car and got his degree and now is giving, you know, speeches to football teams in the NFL for probably 200K. God, like, show me that guy's guy. route. I don't need this guy that, you know, got a head start because I don't have the head start. I always log on to his little lives and I go, hey, dude, let's talk. To E.T.? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? There's um, the struggle, though, of the, the, the you know, you're like, oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to be that. Yeah. It's so weird because I always think about back and forth, and I'm like, damn, like, what if, it doesn't cross my mind as much recently, mm -hmm. but I know that, like, going through the struggle of, like, getting everything off the ground that I started, yeah. a lot of the time I was like, what if I just would have, like, not did all this weird ass fucking shit, like all this <laughs> shit that I do and like yeah. everything that I did and what would my life, cause I look at my dad and my brother and I'm like, damn. Yeah. I think guys, you'd be bored. I'd be bored. I really do. I mean, I think, I, I, that's a big thing for me too. If you are not like 
hurting somebody and clearly i've seen it personally when you're on drugs you'll do things it doesn't matter who's who you'll steal from your family you'll hurt anybody around you i think like if you are not hurting people around you and whatever to me life is like like that was always going to be your path right you can look back and go well if you didn't it's you did you were this is what you did There, there is no if it's like this is who i am i made that choice because it's who I am or who I was at the time. That's all that matters. Right. It does, it's not who I am today versus 10 years ago when you're living on Skid Row are two completely probably different people, at least, at least from standpoints of like motivation. Like you're a guy now that's been through that where 10 years ago you were a guy that's going through it. Yeah, it was weird though because the, the motivation was just different. I was going way harder just to score. You know what I mean? We talked like, about that last time, how yeah. like that whole thing, like if you, you talked about like, man, if I would have put that same energy into like building a business or something else, right. it would have been ball game. I would have been probably out of business now and been retired at 35, 30, you know, like, right. but that was where as a person, that's what motivated you is to go, I need to go get high. And the weirdest thing too, even talking, going back to like, uh, having the, so it's weird, too, because, like, when I talk about, like, racist, it was just how I viewed things that were, un- not that I did, but that I saw that were unacceptable. Mm-hmm. And then going all the way to now of, like, how I serve, yeah. I forget who said it, too. It's like, there was a, I can't remember this quote. But, like, I mean, my, is like, I only... I remember trying to be like, how do you, how am I going to make money helping people? Because mm-hmm. it's all I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the way that I help people and like the people that I help, the demographic, if I didn't go through all that stuff that I was in, I'd hit a wall and mm-hmm. like, yeah, you'd be not, like, oh, this is too much. I'm done. It's yeah. not working or whatever it is. But then and I you always, probably wouldn't be helping those kind of people either. Right. And I always think back to, and this is the thing that always makes me help people is because like, I think back to like, why didn't anyone have this answer for me? Yeah. Why was there no answer for me? And why do I have, you know, like. How come nobody that had been through it said, let me go help these people? Right. But the Where thing, so at? like, it's the craziest thing too, because a lot, like, it's not that like nobody tried to help me. It's no one had the capacity to help me. Mm-hmm. But I have the capacity. Like they didn't know how to help There's you. There's no they way. They might have wanted could, to, right. but they didn't know how. Cause like you get, there's no way to figure it out. And it's like, it's like one is just like, I think helping people, I'll put this guy out. So someone that I, I really think highly of that I think is just burnt, like burnt right now, mm-hmm. would be Kanye West. Mm-hmm. Um, the way, the reason I'm able to have this like open, he's a, like in my opinion, and like I'm sure people watching this will be like, fuck this guy, but. He's a genius, like this guy, you know what I mean? And, uh, but he he's openly speaks about having mental health problems. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like the United States, like he's like the blaring, like disability, mental health, like he's a blaring example of like, there's people that have that same problem that don't have a billion dollars yes you know what i mean and uh he he's like and it's super weird to be like you know like the new shirt i'm not gonna buy it yeah i won't the white lives matter yeah i won't buy the white lives matter shirt i'm not gonna rock it that's like walking around with like a maga hat you're just like you're putting this target on you and it's like but why right (laughs) if you believe in the idea behind it or whatever it's like why do I need that? If you walk out of the house in a MAGA hat or you walk out in a White Lives Matter shirt, like you're just an automatic target for somebody at some point in the day is going to go, fuck that guy. Or right. what's that? Why? Like, what is that guy's deal? Like, See, you're just going to be pegged as something that you might not be. Who knows? I've all, and, that, and, and, and when it even comes to those, those different platforms, I've always just been like, who is helping the most people? Like with the attached of like, like what is actually, if I was to donate or support and what I've come down to at the end of the day is to just like, 
if I want to see something change or I want to, like, I'm just going to have to go do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just going to go do the things that support the community or that I see support the community. And like I said, Kanye West right now is just a blaring in your face look at like uh, how failing our mental health system is. Yeah. Yeah. And I know him being like a billionaire, I mean, he's not gonna go into, he's not gonna check himself into something. Yeah. Just like when I'm like manic and on these like, you know, I go on the same thing, these like tirades of like, I think I'm right. There's no stopping me until the like, till you decide off. you're done. Yeah, till it just goes. You, this is, but this is what I like about Kanye and the whole mental health thing is he's never been like, like a big, I don't, I won't say advocate of like let's fix it. He just addresses it and then is who he is. Like it's almost right. like he, and I don't know, I haven't looked into him enough on that aspect. I follow him too. I think he, I actually like him only because. He does what he wants. He says what he wants. He always has a reason, whether it's a good one or a bad one. Right. There's, he's, there's yet a to, he's yet to divulge. The, see, I think he's in a manic episode right now. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of things happen. And I'm not like a psychiatrist. Yeah. Just, I've seen people in the episodes. I've had friends in these episodes. I've had friends tell me crazy stuff. And I'm like, that's not you. Yeah. I think he's like right there. Yeah. Just like he was when he, the presidency thing. And that was a big one. Where it's like, okay, we don't need to support all these uh, irrational string of thoughts that are coming out of the person. It's like, damn, that person needs support. Yeah. That's what I think. I, and I, I think his episodes, when he does this, they last longer. Like the presidency thing lasted kind of a long time, really, until he did that first speech in the, in the flak, whatever he was wearing, the jacket, right. and you're just like, this was bad. <laughs> like, this he was, started crying. This was not good. Yeah, so you right. look at that, but his last longer because, like, he didn't wear the White Lives Matter shirt and 10 of his friends saw it and said something to him, and then he went through, like, a week of, of it. Like, it's, it blew up so big that it's now going to be in his life until it goes away, right. until people let it go away, or he explains it or whatever it is. So, like his thing and he gets so he stands by everything he does like right. big There's time no going back so until this thing is gone on his account where he explains it good enough or he just says whatever it's his episode's gonna last the white lives matter episode for kanye will last as long as it lasts and when it goes away he'll disappear and be normal for a little bit and then the next thing will pop up and here we go again so i think he his, might he might throw out a banger of an album which then all of a sudden everyone forgets anything I think he's. I think he's gonna put out an album that goes right back to like what made his stuff good in the first like place. Drop out. I think because people, you know, he people will tell you he hasn't put a good album out in ten years. Like they'll say this guy. Some people love his stuff, but a lot of people go. The OG fans do not like. No, they don't Jesus like Jesus is King, and they yeah. don't like Donda. I think he's gonna come back. I and love do it. those albums. I do too. I like what he does. I think those. I think he's gonna come back though, just because of his personality and put something out that says I still can't. Like I've just chosen not to. Right. You know what I mean? Like his. I think his ego is gonna make him go. I'm putting one out that's gonna trump, freaking Drake's albums. I, all of them. Like I'm gonna create an album, and you guys are gonna go. Oh, okay. This guy. Like he's he's Kanye again in the music industry, which I think right. is important to him because that's what he came up in. And I think his personality would, would love to go, you know, you got these artists that continually do this. Like, you now know me as a fashion designer, whatever he is. Right. I'm going to put out an album while you know me as this. Like, so you're going to go, oh, this guy's doing all this and still created this album. He's like, to him, I think ego wise, that's what he's going to end up doing. I have no idea, but I agree with you on, on that. Like it's, it's a, he shines a light on the mental side of it without pushing it, without saying, you know, I'm creating an album to donate all the money to mental health. Like, he right. doesn't do that. He just says, I'm kind of, I think he gives people liberty to live with it and understand, like, this is going to happen regardless. You're going to have your days where you piss your whole family off for two weeks because you're right. in an episode. And it, it's okay. It's you. You know, you got to try to fix it and you don't want to do it. But it doesn't mean you're an asshole. It means... I'm in an episode. I always wondered too if like, man, what if I was like, like, you know, under such this huge spotlight 
Mm -hmm. and then I did something or man because if you like and I don't I don't I never erase this stuff but like if you were to just go back into my Facebook like just cruise mm -hmm. years back 13 years back you just see it my I used it when I was on drugs the same stream of thoughts came out yeah and people like did not understand what I was saying mm -hmm. what it was but then every once in a while it'd be so fucked up that people start you unfollowing yeah yeah say something they disagree this. with it so heavily that it's not just strange it's like i can't i, I can't be part of right doing this anymore i'm out and it all and, and, and all i wanted was was like i would post everything in my stream of thoughts because i just wanted help out of the situation i didn't mm -hmm. want like you know Sweet. i had no capability of like understanding what my situation was like um it was actually a lot easier because I, I know it, so it just kind of relate so much with him from like the point that I got really into Kanye West was when he did that freaking um, what was it that bipolar what was the album that he called oh, yeah being bipolar is awesome. awesome I hate it or something yeah whatever however something he did like that. that right so it's, yeah the being bipolar out when that came out um, I could relate so heavily. Because I remember the first time that the police brought me to a mental health facility instead of jail. Yeah. And it was like so impactful. And that, that was this time, like when I got sober. Um, it was so impactful because I was like, wait, like maybe I'm not this like junky criminal. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's just something wrong up here. That's what I was going to say. My first thought was, so when you mentally, when you get taken into jail, and you get taken into that mental health facility for the first time, is it like, you're going to jail? Like, is that whole thing like, I'm such a fuck up, what the fuck? And then when you go to that for the first time, you're like, wow, maybe I just got a problem. Like, right. something's wrong with me, and it's not a fuck up feeling. It's like, I need to figure out what's wrong with me feeling. So listen is to that. Is that how that would feel? Here, like, this is, I, this is, I'm gonna explain it yeah. to you exactly how it is. When I would go to jail, I was like, I'm not that bad. And I just use drugs, but I'm ending up in jail. Like, I should become a criminal. Mm -hmm. So I used to ask people, well, what do you do? Like, why are you here? Credit card this, uh, counterfeit money this, selling drugs this way. So I would just be, like, writing down, like, a notepad. Like, for real, I would leave there with, like, numbers and ideas and all these new ways to break the law. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, that's my Pretty reality well, now. Yeah. When I went to the mental health facility... I was like, and dude, it's not much, there's not a lot of different, both county facilities, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the mental health's a little bit nicer, but, so jail, racism, guards, unsanitary, rats, horrible food, like, you're, and I think the only escape from jail is everyone's in there talking about how they're not gonna come back, but mm -hmm. like, or if they do, they're gonna have all the money in the bank, because they robbed a bank or they yeah. committed this huge heist and then they're going to do the time and get out to the money. Yeah. And that was like the thing. And, and uh, you know, when I first went, I was like, <laughs> I'm like playing music at the time. Like I was like, you know, touring. Like, I'd in gotten band. in a new band. Yeah, I was like, and that just wasn't my world. And it took a couple of times because every time you get a possession, it's jail, 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 yeah. jail, jail. And then uh, rehab. But if you don't finish the rehab, jail. So like the mental health facility was, I mean, for me, it was this huge, I, I guess I lived in that world too, like, and I feel like when he did that album, he's like, ah, like I know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this, I was the same thing. So I'm like, I know, yeah. but man, like the road from like there to now, there was just, it was a lot of insanity. So like even the first, I'm so glad the first year that I was like in Salvation Army, went to jail like the first year i was sober i had a court case out went to jail lived far from la a little like i lived like azusa at first got out of there dude there was that year one that i wasn't making sense or no, like nothing i was still manic mm -hmm. even year two you know what i mean it's been like i had to like land yeah. you know and that's what i say too it's like um there what he's doing now, me in a, in a manic episode of coming out of jail, like I'm talking, like I was crazy, like meth, crazy, crazy, crazy. There was no filter. Every thought that came out of my, came into my head, came out my mouth, everything like 
like that people put into me became me because I was gone. Yeah. Like I was like a shell of a human being. So it's like, like it took a lot. And that's what I was saying too when in the beginning, like, damn, yeah. I was racist. Like I was saying some fucked up shit because I was a shell of a human being. All I knew was living under a bridge. All I knew was scoring dope. And the only thing now that was in me was like what people you were consuming. Yeah. yeah, what I was consuming. You, you know, in jail, it's like you have to sit with the whites because if you don't, you're going to get stabbed. If you go eat off someone's food, yeah. that's Good another luck. race. Like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, it's a thing, dude. Like, I hear people, like, saying, like, oh, well, you have, a, you have the choice. I'm like, no. You don't have You choice. don't. Like, I, I, I mean, okay, maybe you could uh, only be in, in the hole. I did 30 days in the hole. I almost lost my mind. Mm -hmm. So, like, that just wasn't a choice. I'd rather follow these rules, live by it, survive in that environment, and eventually get out. I, was, I just made a video yesterday, and I was like, dude, I, like, towards the end, and this is how influential that time was. I mean, I was doing a 1,000 burpees every day. Mm -hmm. I was doing what we do. Yeah, I saw that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, uh, and now, so like when I got out, I remember too, I was like, I'm going to keep this good stuff and that jail shit, like yeah. never again. Yeah. And I got out and just my life was all about just working out. That was it. But it was positive, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then every time someone like interjected with this like more positive things or, or work or to, to consume my time, it became part of like me and what I did. And then eventually years later, I'm me. Yeah. Like, I mean. I feel like when you talk about landing, like you had to like take your whatever, however long it took you to really land. Like, I feel like, let's say you're that plane and you're like this, I feel like you start landing, like you said, with Kanye and the album, with you going into the mental health institution going, okay, this is like, it's an acceptance of like, this is who I am. Right. Now I can start landing because I'm not going to deny I have an issue or I have a mental thing, whatever it is. Like now I can, now you can land because, or start to land because you're, ex you're, you're acknowledging right. who you are. That's just like, Kanye and the album, like he probably felt when he put that album out and what that was the title, it didn't even matter what the, the songs were. Right. Just the title alone was probably him saying, okay, world, like you've all been saying it forever. You're right. This is me. This is what I have. And now I'm going <coughs> to say it because I, I mean, I have a, my sister has an ex-husband who's like the biggest, honestly, like piece of work there is. He's a, just a piece of garbage, really. Right. And it, but... I love him to death, and he because he's the first person to tell you like I'm a piece of garbage, right? And this is who I am. I'll never do wrong, but like he's been awesome to me, whatever. But I look at him, I'm like, I think you're hilarious. I think you're awesome, and I don't think I would think any of that if you weren't so just like this is who I am. I'm I know I'm a piece of work, like, right? I know that more than anybody on this planet, and I'm gonna tell you that. And, and I'm going to laugh about it, and I'm going to go, this sucks sometimes. I have my vices. Here's what they are, whatever. But I look at him, and I go, I love this dude because of that. Because he'll say, I'm, he'll be the first one to tell you that. Like, right. people aren't going to talk behind his back about it because they already, he already knows. That's, and see, here's the thing, and that's why I brought this up, because, you know, Chelsea likes to bring this up, this, like, this, like, learned racist bone that grew in my body mm -hmm. that like wasn't me dude you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh and i and i i just it's like this you know people that like knew me at that time when i just got out like i think they have that same thing to say and and the crazy part too is like i mean when i had gotten out the only people that knew me were in the program so it's like everyone came in there like not right yeah you know what i mean like yeah. everyone in a but it's weird too because You'll see some people, not everyone, and there's a lot of good people in LA, but like, you know, when you come in drunk or you come in high, they're like, oh God. Yeah. And it's like, dude, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Like there's nowhere else. Like we just have to, like they say in there, like I'm gonna, I don't know if it's an A thing or, but like, I'm gonna love you until you love yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's, that's truly too, cause I know what it's like to just walk in that room and like, like me, I was like fucked up. You know what I mean? And it just yeah. like, like smoked out to like everything that you've ever heard. Like that was me. I was like the definition of the guy you don't want to help in the room. And like, I like to, you know, publicly in this public forum, be yeah. like, I'm here for you. Yeah. 
Like that's why I stay doing this is for me, if you are me coming into the room or into a treatment center or you're homeless on the street, like I am you and I'm here for you. Yeah. And like, I just like the goal is to build these, you know, to help build and to build my own way of like not being one person there for yeah. hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. Cause obviously it's impossible still now it's manageable. Like when people DM me, I pretty much get back to every single person that DMs me. And I know that, you know, that probably won't always be yeah, as a reality. Yeah, probably be impossible. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I hope that even if it's like not, it doesn't always stay like that, there's still some way to always mm -hmm. have it stay like that. Have a that. little piece of everybody that reaches out and does think. I, I agree. I, I can feel that. I did the same thing. Somebody, you know, I sell hats online. Somebody right. reached out, emailed, I don't know what, DM, whatever it was. Hey, my order this. My, I said, hey, right on. I think I found the the tracking number, so it should be here. Blah blah. Sent you an extra one because it took some time. And they're like, dude, amazing customer service. Right. And I told them like, I'm trying to make sure as as small as we are, and when I have the capacity to do this, like before someone else manages it, right. hopefully one day, like we get big enough to where I have people doing it. I'm like, I want to make sure that I'm like doing this little stuff to the people that are supporting now, right. while I can, like. If we sell a thousand hats a week and a hundred of them have some issues, I'm not answering a hundred emails. Right. Somebody else will. But now, if we sell, you know, a thousand a month and three emails come in, I can go. I got them. Let me right. directly respond and set the so bar. that's the same thing. Like as long as I can, I want to be like personable with people because it matters. Something right. small. So yours is obviously completely different. You're not talking about a hat that was crooked. Like you're talking about life changing Sometimes stuff. Sometimes though. So as long as you can. Because there, nothing will change a person more than the person-to-person -person interaction. Right. Like you could watch a video online of E.T. or somebody and go, yeah, that hits me big time. I like it. But you don't know him. Like, right. You can't have that motivation of what he said wear off and then reach out to E.T. and go, let me get a five-minute conversation right. or text you and have you respond and go, oh, good, Brandon. Just put me right back. I, I love this dude. Like, right. There's a difference in that, I think, to change lives especially going through what you've been through and people are going to go through, the human interaction, like, one-on-one -on -one is, is everything. Unmatched. It is. It Hold is. on, let me check this thing. Oh, yeah. This is another yeah. Trap. But, it, see, the thing, too, that I was thinking of is, like, you just said, like, with E.T., um, I want to get to that level though, where I have so much content out that there's like, like a way to like put it into an app or mm -hmm. something and be like, this is like, like job seeking, uh, housing, food, like just these things that where you could just like click through this thing. Cause I, I like, I really, like, I'd love to be able to have five minutes with him. Yeah. I think he might be the only Inky Johnson's cool. He's cool. I is it, there's. I mean, all the really, really influential people that I want to yeah. know, I know. But I mean, I think he's one of those like motivational people that I would love to have like five, ten minute yeah. conversation with. Probably yeah. even like, I forget. I think Jay Z a lunch with him was like a million dollars. They just did That's so wild. Yeah, or dinner or something. But yeah, if I had disposable income mm -hmm. of a million dollars, I feel it's like that five. To, because I think, too, if we had the conversation, then we just get phone numbers, we'll, mm -hmm. like, lock in. Mm -hmm. I agree. I mean, I think, like you said, it's the person-to-person -person interaction, I think, is where you build the mass interaction. And right. obviously, I think it's better to have the platform to put it out to millions and millions. Your percentages of, of that are going to be smaller for people you directly affect for life right but that small percentage of that's going to be way bigger than the 10 people you can communicate with directly like if if five percent of people are changed for life out of the five million there's a lot of people that you just you know what i mean like that's right. fifty thousand people i think i don't know whatever the stats on that but However that's a lot years. of people you know what i mean so right. to build that it, it makes sense to go i want to change lives this is how you do it just mass consumption it's like kind of like almost like advertising like a grant cardone the yeah 
the real, I don't even know what he does, 10X guy, his whole thing. Like, he went back and somebody said, what would you do different in your whole process? And he's a multi, probably hundreds of millions of dollar guy. He does his thing. He said, I would go back and before I did any of this, I would take out every loan I could and put all of it to advertising because right, yeah. the more people that see it, it's like if I have a vacuum that is okay and you have a, an amazing vacuum and I pay the money to get a million people to see mine right. and you get a hundred people, a hundred thousand people to see yours, I'm going to sell more. Right. I'm going to sell more. So getting yourself out there is key because there's, there's so many people, if, if you put it out to 10 million people, the, the percentage of people that are going to see it and go, yeah, is is pretty big, right. I think. I mean, for anything you do. Like, there's an audience out there, so getting it in front of the audience is the only thing that really matters. And then after that, then it's continuing to put out content that makes sense to them. Or I, I don't even like calling it content because you're, you're not here to make content. You're here to create conversation. I yeah, but yeah, you I, know what I mean? I mean but like, calling, calling what you do or what you want to do content is like, I'm not making content just to change lives. Like, you're right. here to change lives. There's yeah. content within it. And you create tons of content for yourself, yeah. for me, for, for all kinds of people. Like you have a production studio. You, have, you can go film a music video. You can film a podcast. You can do whatever you want, which is crazy to me because I make TikToks and feel overwhelmed. I know, <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? So for you to do what you do and, and do it and not look like you're being spread thin is, is wild. My like schedule. That's wild. It's the planner, the online planner. Mm -hmm. Planning every minute of my life. Oh, well, it's just like this meeting. It was the same thing last night. We talked. Yeah, no, like, let me see, like, let me see me what a, block. Give me a time, and then I'm going to go home and see what block I have of time tomorrow, and here we are. Like, and I was telling you, I'm like, give me this. Let me put yeah. this in my schedule. Yeah. Last thing, we're going to end with this, because we covered a lot. We even got Kanye in on this, this podcast, <laughs> all right? Always. The hot ticket. The hot ticket right now. What do you think of censorship? I, I'll tell you, know, you what I think after. Okay. I, I don't like it. I'll tell right. you, I, I don't like it at all. And I, I'll tell you why. I look at, it, it's almost like, it's like you, when you believe in something, it, it, again, it doesn't matter what it is. Like, that's what you believe in. And right. if it's not, I believe in Jeffrey Dahmer was a good dude. That's what I want to do. Like, that's fucked up. You shouldn't believe in that. Right. <laughs> but if it's like, I believe in the dude that got, what's his name? The, the, Freaking man's man who, that just got banned from every platform. Oh, the yeah. bald fighter. Cardo yeah, or? He's everywhere, whatever. He's, he about. talks about being a man. Right. Like that's, that's his really underlying thing. And he comes across in a super brash way, I think, on purpose to like, because he knows going viral is what matters. Right. And he gets his stuff out there. But when you really listen to the guy, like you're, you're now taking this away from people and now they, you're telling them that's wrong you can't listen to that but it's like this is what platforms are for right for anybody like is somebody going to decide one day that video games are bad for mental health so there'll be no more streamers and like what people enjoy this who gives a fuck what it is like i enjoy it i want to see it does it matter to you if i sit in my basement at 40 years old and play video games for five hours a day and watch right. streamers like this is what i want to do with my life so to me censorship is telling number one somebody else that they're wrong as far as who, who you're censoring, you're wrong. You're, you get Kanye, everything, you're wrong. You can't right. be on here. You can't do it. Trump, you can't do it. Different situation. That's a president, I guess, whatever. But when you get guys like that and you, or people, men, women, whoever, and you take them off platforms, you're just telling people that what you believe in is wrong. And I don't, I, to me, it's ridiculous. So here's, here's my outlook. This is actually something. So I, like, obviously, how I roll, I, I don't like to be censored. Mm -hmm. Like if, there, if you're like, oh, you can't do this podcast. If you cuss, then you know I wouldn't yeah. do it. But I, I'd find somewhere to run it. And that, so I had this conversation with someone earlier and I, I look at it like this. I'm like, unfortunately, Mark Zuckerberg owns these platforms mm -hmm. or the people of Twitter own their platform. Yeah. So I was telling this kid today, I said, if you came into my salon and you started saying crazy stuff, mm -hmm. I would make you leave. Yeah. But if you do it outside in the parking lot, more power to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like this like weird, um, 
Because I just look at it like, for what it is, I'm like, that is this guy. It's yours, you created it. Right, he made yeah, this true. thing and he gets to just take you off. It's just like if someone uh, started, you know, if they came in your office. And just started saying, but think about this. We would be pushing but these guys out. This, right, yeah, go think ahead. About that. You have the salon. Right. Would you kick somebody out for coming in and saying, blue hair is awesome. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I love it. You guys should all love it. You'd be like, cool, that's your opinion. Of right. It, because that's what people do. When you, ha when you create a social media app that is made to give people a platform to say what they want to say. Right. And when you don't agree with what they're saying, you kick them off. But your whole platform was created for that, to get people's ideas into the world. Right. So that's where I would look at, like, if somebody, like you said, it's your business. I feel the same way. I totally agree with you on that. Like, it, it's, there's an owner of Walmart. If he doesn't right. like what's going on in there, see you later. You're done. I own this company. That's fair. I think it's fine that they do it. I just don't agree with when you create a social media platform that is made to give people a platform to speak their mind right. and then cut them off of your platform that's made for exactly that, that to me is like, why make the platform? Right. Just because you think that out of a billion people on this, however many billion people on this planet, that you're going to agree with everybody's thing? You don't make a social media platform if you're going to say, only if you say things I like. Right. Or I, like. So like, I always, even the people, I mean, I enjoy humanity for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be this thing, I don't think, in my head that everyone gets along. I mean, the, in the jungle, the lion kills yeah. the gazelle. Yeah. So there's two people that don't get along. Yeah. So like, I really, really, really enjoy all of humanity and seeing it unfold. And a lot of things that people think are bad, I'm like, it's this necessary things that has to happen for the evolution yep. of humanity. So like, I mean, that's why I really dislike censorship. But um, like when I like with you and, and this guy earlier, I'm like, I think that's really a uh, especially for people running businesses or platforms yep. like with trash can talk. I urge people now to put on a uh, sign up for the mailing list. Yeah. Because you don't know if this could get taken off. And if it did, then yeah. I'd have to upload it somewhere else and then mail it, yeah. tell the, the followers where, where, where it is. Where you get it now, yeah. And, I mean, the same thing, like, with Young Gods, like, I just take your information. Like, you, you have to check out, so yeah. I have your information. Yeah. I'm going to, if you, we ever, you know what I mean? We move and, or something has to happen, you're going to know. Obviously, Kanye has more than, you know, he has so many of his, like, ordered, you ordered from him, obviously, mm -hmm. you're subscribed to his mailing list. But, yeah, I mean... To end on that, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Jake Savicki, TikTok, Jake Savicki. I kind of, everything's just my name, basically. If you Google Jake Savicki, S-A-V-I-C-K-I, you'll find me on probably whatever platform. But find me here on this podcast now, Trash Can Cut Podcast. That was what it's called, right? Yep. Try, I, I only asked that because, I, like I said, your hands are in, you do so many different things. Right. I want to make sure, but... Um, and this is to me like reoccurring. I was just gonna say, I, this our conversations are. I mean, there's no notes 